After spending a, about a year in college, I decided to join the U.S. Army. Maybe 17-year mark in my military career, um, things slowed down for me physically, and I had a few injuries and just couldn't um, run anymore. And they actually told me, you know, you may not really pick up running again. And I would always see her post, her running posts, and we used to run together. And I would, and I would just say, someday I'm going to run again. And I went out and did the 5K, and I was like I feel like a runner again I did so well and I immediately signed up for a marathon hey listeners if you are enjoying the stories please leave a comment share or subscribe to this channel for two reasons. First, you'll get notified when I publish the next story. Second, it inspires me to get you more stories. I'm your host, Kamal Dada. Enjoy the story. Welcome, Masure, to the podcast. I'm really excited to have you here and actually learn about your learning journey. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Great. Uh, to kick it off, let's start with your background a little bit. Yeah, so um, I was, um, I'm 44 to just get that out of the way. Um, and I was born in the United States. My family immigrated from West Africa, Sierra Leone to be exact. And I grew up right here in the Washington um, DC metropolitan area for most majority of my life. Um, and when I was 20 years old, um, after spending a, about a year in college, I decided to join the U.S. Army. And um, and that's honestly where my running journey uh, started, oh, wow. um, okay. was in the Army. That was the first time I ever really ran at all, um, was in basic training. Um, but uh, that is um, kind of like where life began for me. And I spent a lot of years away. I did end up doing 20 years in the army and retired in um, 2019. I have a 21 year old son and um, he's grown responsible out of the house. So I'm currently an empty nester. And now in my retired life, I sell real estate and do run vacations, run vacations. Oh, great. First of all, thank you for your service. Thank you. And uh, 20 years in the army. Um, yeah. So you probably bring in a lot into that, into your running journey, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, and you mentioned briefly that you started running when you joined the army. Yes. So how did that, you know, transform over? Because you're now running long distance running. You just wrapped up mm -hmm. Berlin. Yeah. Like, so how was the journey to get to running a marathon for you, especially in long distance running? <laughs> well, the, um, the journey was actually long. I would say I actually started long distance back, um, I want to say it was maybe 2004, 2005. Oh, okay. in and at the time I was stationed in Mannheim and um, I ran with um, a unit team and we would just go out and do these 10 mile runs. Um, we would always have like a race or something that was coming up around um, country. Um, we even, I think the furthest run we did was the Zook Spitz um, Extreme Berglauf, which was like a 16 mile mountain run. And um, it was the longest I ever did, period. Okay. Um, and then shortly after like the long distance running, you know, it just sort of stopped because I moved on. I went somewhere else and no one really did it. Um, and so it was, you know, the longest she did was three, three to five miles. Um, yeah. So to um, fast forward, when I got to about the maybe 17 year mark in my military career, um, things slowed down for me physically. And I had a few injuries and just couldn't um, run anymore. Um, I had to rehab from that. And they actually told me, you know, you may not really pick up running again, um, okay. but they, they wanted me to continue being active. So that was... Um, 2017-ish, 2019, I figured I'm never going to run again. I'll just walk. So I would just walk every day. Um, but I had a friend that I was stationed with um, 
in Germany at, a, at another installation. And I would always see her post, her running posts, and we used to run together. And I would, and I would just say, someday I'm going to run again. And she was like, I really believe you can do it again. And, mm -hmm. and one day I just decided to sign up for a 5K in 2021. Oh, okay. So I signed up for the 5K. Um, I had to train for it. And that took about five or six weeks. Um, and in the midst of that, um, I didn't, I didn't also tell you because I wasn't running, I had gotten overweight, like 30 pounds overweight from retiring, not running, just, um, unhealthy habits. Um, so by me training for that 5k and just the discipline that comes with an actual training schedule and the structure, I actually got very close to my normal weight from just from right. the 5k training. And um, I went out and did the 5K and I was like, I feel like a runner again. I did so well. And I immediately signed up for a marathon. Oh, wow. Okay. Now, everybody, I didn't, I guess because I had ran long distance before, I knew yeah. I had the ability and I had done several 10 mile races, even though they were, I was at a different physical capability back then. I didn't have the injuries back then, but I knew I had the heart to do a marathon. I just didn't know what the training looked like. And mm -hmm. now at that point I did. So this was um, 2021, um, fall 2021, I signed up for the Miami Marathon. Oh, great. Yeah, and um, I trained for close to six months for it. And I just I just wanted to just complete a marathon by the time I turned 43. And, um, and I went to Miami. Uh, the training was grueling because we were training in the winter here. Um, mm -hmm. And Miami was like, 85 degrees in February. Oh, wow. um, okay. Yeah. So I went down there and ran my first marathon and, um, it was very hard. Um, I don't think at the time I thought I'm going to run more, but I, I wasn't against running more, mm -hmm. just the recovery was tough and I, I didn't know how to go about doing anything. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to finish the run. And so I didn't think past like what happens after you finish the run. Okay. So, <laughs> um, so once I got through recovering, um, I was like, I think I want to do more marathons. I did like two half marathons within a month or two and okay. signed, up, signed up for Paris 2023. And, um, and that's when I knew I was like, I'm locked into the marathon journey. Um, and I just want to get better. And, um, uh, so I trained for Paris and mm -hmm. um, experienced some injuries along the way with my IT band. It was just an old injury, some patella injuries, hip pain. And I had to work through those with physical therapy. Oh, um, I see. So when I went to Paris this year, which was in April, mm -hmm. I did great. I PR'd. I was like, great. I didn't. I just thought that was it for the marathons for this year. Uh-huh. And, um, and then I found out that I could potentially go to Chicago, um, which wasn't really on my radar. I figured maybe one day I'll do those major races. I just didn't think that I was like that runner that could make it there to a major race. Okay. Um, so I found out through Marathon Tours because I was in their Seven Continents Club. Hey, you can go to Chicago. Um, and I was like, oh, okay, well, sign me up. And I was like, but I really wanted to go to Berlin. And mm -hmm. they told me they didn't have room on the wait list for, or they didn't have room for Berlin. Um, so I just trained for Chicago like normal through the summer. And I went and I did a half marathon in Napa Valley, California. And right as I was leaving in July, I found out, hey, you're going to Berlin. And- Oh, wow. Okay. You no, know, and that I was like, I just said immediately, yes not thinking they're two weeks apart, how, you know, yeah. I just said yes and sent the deposit. Like I didn't actually think, think it through, you know, how marathoners are, you just sort of just like, whatever, I'm just going to register for this race. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, so yeah, so I just had to move my training up like two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, and then as August came and I hit the peak time frame, I said, I'm going to need some help with some strat race day strategy because these are two big races and one is going to have to be less important one is going to have to be fun and the other one is going to be where i'm like kind of more focused on the run mm -hmm. the race so 
because Berlin was coming up first and I hadn't had a, I had to take a break during my training mm -hmm. that was going to be considered more like a long leisurely run. And, I see. Uh, and so I just went to Berlin and approached it that way. Oh, great. Yeah. Now, looks like from your 5K to your first marathon, you say within six, seven months, you went there? Within, yeah. So I did the 5K in September of 2021 and then did um, the first marathon in of 2022. Yeah, so like six Wow. And that's pretty intense from 5K to marathon, um, mm -hmm. like after with the long break, you went there. I wonder, like, how was the training like and, and what traits from your army days you bring into that? Because it's a lot of pretty intense because getting to from 5K, yeah. you know, people take years to get there from a you know, 5K yeah. to a marathon. So I think what I brought to it was um, just it was like some, uh, they call it intestinal fortitude or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's like, you see this big training plan, but, and you're like, I don't know if I could do it, but then you're like, I, you know, as long as I get up each day, yeah. Yeah. I'm probably going to do it. Like if this is the only thing I tackle this day, like in, in the military, we used to always say your, your workout is probably the hardest thing of the day. You know, if you're not, you know, performing some mission or something like that. Um, and so mm -hmm. I would look at it that way. And it just didn't seem daunt. For some reason, it didn't seem that hard because right. I was like, it, I was actually taking the 18 weeks and actually stretching it out because mm -hmm. 18 weeks is not six months. It's, you know, under five months. Right. Um, and, and I got pretty strict with my diet. I didn't drink during that period. I um, just went up to drinking a gallon of water um, and I just you know, I, I looked at, I approached it like, okay, this is something serious. So many things could happen to me. I need to really learn about running from the mindset of, um, someone that wasn't in the military. Cause in the military, all we did was just, we just ran and you ran as fast as you could. Right. Um, and, um, and we were running for a two mile, you know, uh, mm -hmm. fitness test. So, and with, training for a marathon is all about endurance. So I had to, I had to switch on to thinking like almost the way you think, like I'm going to stay in the military for 20 years, which means that I need to manage my movements. I need to manage how I do things. I need to start sleeping better. I need mm -hmm. to start eating better. I need to say no to some social engagements that aren't a priority because I know I have to get up in the right. morning and run. So um, I just approach it that way. And I think the army did give me a sense of discipline. Mm -hmm. um, and I was always longing for that structure. So the structure of having a training plan right. made it amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, there's nothing like it. So <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And it, so you got the opportunity to go back to Germany where we deployed a couple of years before so yeah. tell a little bit about how did it feel your your overall your berlin marathon experience like uh you're looking for it because you're looking to be into berlin but you know you got sh chicago and then you got the opportunity to run berlin overall how was the experience um it was just it was so it, there were so many emotions like i mean it's been a month exactly and i'm still filled with emotions and gratitude for <clears throat> just having the opportunity to go there um because I went to um to Germany when I was like 22 and that and that was such a young age and to go from being 22 to like 29 um you know that's a huge gap when you're in your 20s so that's a long period right. of time you're kind of growing up there so like the sights the sounds the smells like like it all smelled the same and looked kind of the same, even though, you know, things have changed. And I was just, I was extremely happy. I, um, I thought that the way like the expo, well, Marathon Tours um, welcomed us really well. They provided a great racing experience and um, week and weekend for us. Mm -hmm. um, the hotel and stuff was great. Uh, the expo was amazing. Like I literally yeah. had no complaints. <laughs> and it <took laughs> That's true. I was so happy to be there. So, um, <clears throat> and I still knew how to do so many things in Germany because I had right. left 10 years before. So mm -hmm. 
um, it was amazing. And to take my mom with me, because oh, she, nice. And last time she was in Germany was when I was stationed there as well. Um, it was, yeah, it was just, it was just great. And I, I just left there thinking, I know I don't have to come and run this major again, but if given the opportunity, I'll come again. That's great to know. That's yeah. glad that you enjoyed and it bring back so many memories for you and a wide you know, spectrum of uh, days that, you know, a couple of years mm -hmm. uh, between last time you visited or there versus now. Uh, one thing I'm curious, looks like you definitely got into running and continuing to run because you are also looks like get the goal of world managers in the process. So yeah. definitely you're getting quite a few things out of running. Yeah. Uh, I'm just curious what these are for Masire. And like what am I getting? <clears throat> like what is the impact of running on your life overall, you know, any aspects of your life? Yeah. So I think overall, it's just sort of like mental well-being. Um, I think running and endurance training in general, endurance running builds a sort of mental toughness um, unlike anything else uh, that you don't necessarily get from um because it's such a it's a positive experience and you're out there on your own but you're just out there for the long haul and I don't I think that people don't necessarily know like what they can take until they do something like that right and then, and then as you go and deal with things throughout life because I'm in a very um I, I'm in a business in real estate now that it could get stressful mm -hmm. I I it's just you just kind of look at the big picture because when you are planning to run a marathon, you're not thinking about the first six miles. You're really thinking about how do I need to execute um, to get to mile 20? And so that way I'm strong at mile 20 so I can finish that last 10K. Um, so you start approaching a lot of your life like it really is a marathon. But I think it feels such... Um, it builds such strength in the emotional and mental well-being um, arena for me. Um, and then I get a sense of community. I, In the past month, I've been around over 100,000 people uh -huh. and met so many people. Obviously, I didn't meet all of them, but I've just met so many people in the running community. Um, and then by them sharing their experiences with me, they've taught me um, it, you know, things, even if I have been running longer than them, um, or if we just run differently or whatever. Um, so it just gives me a sense of community and just builds that mental toughness. Oh, that's, that's great. Um, uh, yes, definitely the community and what you just mentioned, the mental toughness is definitely one of the key output of running or the byproduct of running that you always get. Now, obviously you're chasing all these goals, quite a few marathons. I'm just curious how you have built your support system because you need one. You're yeah. working, you have a family, um, and you have running. So you have to balance all those things. You have to build a support system around you yeah. to chase your goals. How does that look for you? Um, so, you know, <laughs> it's so funny because um, I just literally told, when I told my family initially about the first marathon, no one thought, oh my God, you're crazy. Why would you do that? They were just like, okay, when is it? So we can take off work so we can be there. Um, and now they're like, okay, where are we going next? Um, <laughs> but like yeah. my mom, um, my cousins, my brother, um, um, and even the, my teammates, they, they really support it. Um, and my family, especially, um, they are also, they, they validate what I'm doing as well. They don't, they don't make me feel like I'm doing something crazy. They don't ask me why I'm doing this, which is some of the questions that we often get like, well, why? Like, you're not yeah. going to win. Why are you running the marathon? My family doesn't do that. They just, they just say, okay, like that's, you know, that's really great. Like what's the next place? And what did you learn? Like, it looks like you're recovering better. You know, um, they help me by, you know, being there, learning the route when we get to, like when we went, went to Chicago or even Berlin, my mom, you know, ensured that she knew how to get from point A to point B so she could support me. Oh, nice. um, you know, they're there to help me get into the ice bath, whatever it takes, they assist. And someone is always there. They're like they never let me go to a race um, and I'm just alone. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I think that goes a long way for me. Yeah, yeah. So you did back to back Berlin and then Chicago? Yeah. So which one you choose to be your not so important one? <laughs> I actually chose Berlin um, okay. because I knew um, what I could do was I could treat it like almost like you, instead of you doing your 20 mile long run, you're just sort of like, I think I'm going to lo run longer. I have the ability to run longer. Right. Um, so I tried to keep my heart rate, tried to make sure it didn't go too high, even though it was quite hot that day, you know, it was hot for a running day, but I tried to keep my heart rate, um, you know, make sure it didn't go too high. I tried to work on my nutrition, but I knew like Chicago, I was like really going to be like nailing down the nutrition. I was really going to be very focused. Berlin, I was just like, la di da having fun. Yeah. I didn't put a lot of pressure on myself. Yeah, I was saying um, uh, because of that approach, um, so I had consulted with a coach beforehand to assist me with the race day strategy. And excuse me, we knew like there was no, you can't just, you can't approach both of them and be like, I'm going to fully like go in on both. Mm -hmm. uh, because that would just be too much on my heart on, on everything so I really had to like make one like almost like it was that run before the taper run oh nice that's yeah good. before the uh, last taper run yeah did you see any difference the way you experienced the races because these are both world majors mm -hmm. you know you have the support on the best supports on the course you can get like yeah. did you experience them differently since you have one the yes. aggressive goal versus one not let it not so i did experience different support um the i think in chicago they provide like more in terms of like electrolytes there's so many but berlin had the streets were filled up but in chicago they were max like this like there were so many people on the street so it's impossible for your head to go down you know how it is like there's these stretches sometimes where you're like I don't even know. You don't see any people on the side. Like, <laughs> yes, yeah, I don't yeah. know what's going to happen at the next turn. Um, it was not like that in Chicago. Um, and then they they had long areas for aid, um, like the Gatorade and the water and stuff like that. The tables were stretched out, but it was happening every mile and a half. So it was um really, I think, maybe slightly more supported than Berlin. I see, um, I see. Berlin maybe had like the better gels. They had the better, you know, they had Martin gels. But, yeah, um, yeah. But, you know, they didn't um, get provided enough, I don't think. Um, and um, and then I think it was maybe one thing that I don't know, to me, it didn't make sense, the the Coke and the tea. I'm like, we need, we need salt <laughs> right now. Not Warm tea. Yeah, that, that was an interesting experience in Berlin too. One of the things I have seen folks say like, hey, if you're not like pressured or chasing this major goal in a marathon, like you enjoy like, you know, all the majors have some performances going on on both sides. Like, hey, you have time to take pictures, pause and all this, enjoying those. Yeah. I'm just not sure if those are uh, different for you because I think both yeah. races had something going on throughout yeah. the course, right? Yeah, they have, um, yeah, they are taking pictures. I I got the best pictures out of Berlin. Cause oh. I was, I mean, I was smiling everywhere. In Chicago, I was just like kind of focused. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't know if I had enough sleep. So I really did have to be cognizant. Yeah. Um, and I was just sort of like, I need to, you know, is it 30 minutes? Okay, I need to take this gel. Is it 30 minutes? Okay, I need to take this. Like okay. I was, whereas in Berlin, it was, you know, a little bit more relaxed. And, um, and so with all my pictures in Berlin, I'm just like, like having a good time in Chicago. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. more like, you know, and then when I got to, but I noticed that I didn't have any type of cramping when I got to the end in Chicago, I was able to, oh, when I got to 20 miles, that's where I actually picked up the pace as mm -hmm. opposed to slowing down. Um, I see. Because okay. I was paying attention, like, to what I was doing. Oh, so I right. think that sometimes the goal should, for me, I think maybe my goal should just be, okay, let me nail down this nutrition. Let me nail down the hydration. And until then, I don't need to be worried about what the time is gonna be. I need to make right. sure that I arrive alive. <laughs> you know? <laughs> that, is, that is critical. Yeah. So what's next for Masure? 
So what's next is um, I am going to do the London Marathon. Um, so I, I'm i currently in the Personal Best Program and I'm starting a low heart rate training um, and I'll do a math test in probably the next week or so and officially oh, okay. start. So, but I've already started doing some of my base building um, already and um, and I'm doing quite a bit of strength training now. Uh, just because I do want my legs and all that stuff to be stronger and prepared for London. Oh, that's uh, exciting. That's uh, all the best, Masire, for uh, London. I know that's a very awesome race as well. That would be your third major, I think, right? Yes. Oh, great. So you're almost halfway through by next spring then. Yes. Halfway through. Yeah. Great. It was lovely chatting with you and wish you all the best.